Hello everybody, welcome to the Life is Not a Casserole YouTube channel, a channel about running and running adjacent things. And thanks for watching. I am Elizabeth Meyer. I am an RRCA certified running coach and I am officially a 50 mile race ultra marathon finisher. So in today's video, I thought it would be nice to go over my entire race kit packing list, the things that I wore on my person during the race and also the things that I put in my drop bags. And we'll talk about what worked really well and what things that I would do differently in the future. So let's dive into the packing list. So first we'll talk about the stuff that I had on my person during the race. So things that I was wearing, things that I was carrying with me the entire time. Working from the head down, I had a headlamp, which I had put fresh batteries in. I wanted one on me for the entire race because I didn't know how I was going to do it. It's, it's possible that it could have gotten dark earlier than when I was able to get to my headlamp that I had kept in my drop bag. And I was really glad that I had it because it did actually get dark a mile or two before I reached that aid station where I had my drop bag with the extra headlamps and the extra batteries. And I did need to pull it out. I also had a hat along, sunglasses, which I didn't end up using because it was actually raining and cloudy all day, but that's okay. I wore shorts with built-in briefs, a sports bra, a tank top. The weather was forecasted to be lows in the 40s and highs in the upper 60s, lower 70s. And I was pretty comfortable in a tank top and shorts. It did end up raining, so that kind of felt a little bit cold. I actually felt pretty comfortable because I was just continuing to move forward. A lot of people were in a lot of layers at the race. A lot of people wearing their rain jackets and leggings and long sleeve shirts. So maybe it just depends on what you are acclimated to as far as what you are comfortable wearing in rainier weather. I also wore my darn tough socks, which were great. I only got one blister the whole time. And I wore my ultra superior five shoes. I brought along a buff, which I really like because my nose gets really runny whenever I run outside. So I actually use it, this is kind of gross, but I actually use it like a handkerchief, like, like I'm an old man with his handkerchief. I carried a spare set of glasses with me in a just a really lightweight glasses case because if something were to happen where I would have had to take out my contacts or if a contact were to fall out or something like that, I wanted to have a way to see. And then moving on to fuel and hydration, stuff. I carried all of this stuff in my hydration vest, which is a Nathan brand one. I'm not sure the exact model. And then I also had a race belt along. It was also a uh, Nathan brand belt, but it's kind of like one of those naked belts that are super spandexy and, and lightweight and you can put stuff inside them. So I carried my water and all of the extra stuff in my hydration vest and then all of my fuel and my phone I put in my race belt. My hydration vessel that I used for this race were two water bottles. They were about 500 milliliter water bottles and I like to use the hose and bit valve attachment for the top of it so that I don't have to pull them out all of the time. I can just tilt my head forward and, and get some water out of that. I also used a collapsible race day cup and this was very handy for at the aid stations. I had them fill it up with Coca-Cola. I carried fuel for the race. I decided to figure out what the bare minimum fuel that I would need during the race would be and carry that much along. And then anything extra I put in my, in my drop bag. So if I ended up using more of my fuel than I thought I would, then I have extra fuel in the drop bag. So it really wasn't vital for me to have a ton of fuel along. I ended up carrying maybe eight gels and maybe seven or eight solid food options, so salted nut rolls and, and Lara bars. And I think in the future I would carry even less than that because I actually ended up using food from the aid stations a lot more than I thought I would. I had along a very, very mini first aid sort of kit along. So it was just like a little Ziploc bag with a big Band-Aid and an alcohol wipe just in case maybe I would have fallen and skinned my knee or something and needed to attend to that right away. I brought along hand sanitizer. And as far as electronics, I brought along my iPhone, which was fully charged. And I just used that for filming and for photos rather than bringing my GoPro along. I also brought my flip phone, which was fully charged so that I could text or call Tony when I was a few miles from the aid station where I would meet him. 
I just want to cut in here quick and say that I recognize that most people would probably just be bringing their smartphone along. I actually have a flip phone as my phone phone and I use my iPhone as, as sort of like a mini tablet or an iPad. Not going to go into my whole digital philosophy. I just wanted to mention that uh, that is why I have two phone devices. And then I had my Garmin, which again was fully charged. A couple other things to mention are, I had added to my contacts on my phone, the emergency number for the race. It was different than 911. They actually had an on-site medical crew that was familiar with the trails and everything and, and access points. So they wanted you to call a specific number that was not 911 if you were in need of assistance. And then also from the race website, I downloaded the GPX file of the race course and I added that to my Garmin, which was honestly amazing and I never felt lost once and I'm definitely going to be doing that for future trail races if it's possible because there were a couple of, of turns that some people missed or maybe were a little bit confused about but I was never confused or never felt I was lost because I had the course map right on my Garmin. Uh, it's really nice, this is awesome. I also printed and packed along a physical map in case all else failed. And then before the race, I put on bug repellent and sunscreen, which I did not carry with me, but that was something that I had applied prior to the race. And then moving on to my drop bag. So, so this list is for the drop bags that were specific to the race that I did. However, I do think a lot of it could supply universal information for other races as well. So the drop bags in this particular race were at miles about 11, mile 18.3, mile 28.8, mile 33.5 and mile 42. And actually you were not able to have any crew access until mile 42. So the drop bags were very important in this race. The first two drop bag spots were actually at the same aid station that you just hit twice in this race. And in this one, I put more general stuff that I thought that I might need. I didn't know if I would or not, but for this one I included body glide, anti-chafing body glide, sunscreen, some compede for in case I had a blister to attend to and some band-aids and alcohol wipes. Uh, they would also probably have a lot of this stuff, that stuff at the aid stations if they have medical services. Um, some more bug repellent wipes and uh, some extra fuel. And then at the next two aid stations, which were at mile 28.8 and mile 33.5, also both of these drop bags were at the same aid station that you just hit twice during the course of this race. Again, some general stuff that I put in this drop bag included anti-chafe body glide, sunscreen, more compede, and a, another mini first aid kit with band-aids and alcohol wipes, bug repellent wipes, and extra fuel. And then some stuff that I had at this aid station that I did not have at the prior one. I had extra hand sanitizer in case at this point I had used up all the hand sanitizer that I was carrying along with me. Extra socks. And I also at this aid station had hiking poles because leaving this aid station, the runners were required to go up this very steep two mile incline and then come back down. And, and so I just kept my hiking poles stashed in that drop bag. When I hit the aid station the first time, I grabbed my hiking poles, went up and down the hill, and then put the hiking poles back in the drop bag since I wouldn't need them for the rest of the course. And then moving on to mile 42. In this drop bag, I had some stuff in my drop bag, but I also had some stuff with Tony who was crewing for me. I had body glide, no sunscreen this time because it was going to be dark at this point in the race. Compede, that mini first aid kit, extra bug repellent wipes, extra fuel, again, extra socks. And then in this particular one, I also had extra batteries and extra headlamps. And then Tony also had some extra shoes and a long sleeve pullover. He, his bag was sort of combined with stuff that I thought that I might need for post race, but I ended up using some of it during the race. So I was very glad that he was there. In the prior aid stations, I had used some of the body glide because my underarms chafed more than I expected they would. I always kind of forget about that spot. Um, and it was raining during this race a lot. So actually at this aid station, I 
put on some dry socks and a different pair of shoes and put on my long sleeve because I figured it was going to be a little bit chilly. It was getting dark at this point. I actually planned to walk a lot of it in the dark and so I was going to get a little bit colder and my shoes and my socks got really wet after about 10 minutes I stepped in this horrible puddle, but it still felt very cushy and was a little bit of a morale booster just having those warm dry socks even just for that moment. I also ended up grabbing a second headlamp and using that in addition to the one that I had already because I just wanted a little more brightness. In the future, I would invest in a really nice, really bright headlamp. And then in my bag for Tony of things that I thought that I might want for the finish, I had this thermal foil blanket that I got at a race after the, the Twin Cities 10 miler, just in case I was cold, some extra snacks, that long sleeve that I had actually used already and was already wearing. And there was also some stuff for him in there as well. There were snacks for him, a water bottle, bug repellent, sunscreen, hand sanitizer. Also put the URL for tracking runners on the bag so that he could easily know where to go to, to track my progress. I did not reapply any more sunscreen or any bug repellent on this, on this particular race, but that does not mean that this would not still be good stuff to pack for any race. It just happened to be in the desert. I didn't experience any mosquitoes out there and it did rain the whole time and so it was very cloudy. So I did not reapply any sunscreen at all, but I would still pack these along in any other race that I was doing. And then I also packed some recovery things. I had some noon tablets that I had the day before the race. I packed along some compression socks and I also had the Yoga Today app downloaded so that I could do some pretty chill yoga classes in the next days following just for a little bit of recovery just to do some gentle movement. My muscles had taken kind of a beating, but it felt really nice to move the muscles and, and stretch them out a little bit. So a couple things that I did not have room for in my luggage that I would have packed if I had included a yoga mat, a travel yoga mat. I actually just used a blanket, an extra blanket from the hotel closet and my foam roller I was not able to pack either. That would have been nice to have before the race, but I got by without it. Another thing I would have done differently, it worked out during this race, but if I were to do a future one, instead of just packing a long sleeve for the finish line, I would also pack one along the course, just because you really don't know what the weather is going to be like. Um, I did not expect it to rain in the desert. I did not expect it to snow during a previous 50K I had done. I think it's just very good to plan for all types of weather, no matter what race you're doing, no matter where it is. So that is my packing list. I really hope that you found it helpful. I know it's very helpful for me to go over the entire inventory and figure out what worked and what didn't work just for future purposes. There were a lot of things that I packed along that I ended up not using, but there were also a lot of things that I used that I did not expect to have to use. I don't think I would have left anything out that I did pack. And I think in the case of most races, overpacking is just fine. I have been burnt enough times where the weather has been unexpected and I've made a panicked trip to Target or a running store to buy some sort of piece of clothing that I did not think that I needed. So I think it's always better to pack something and not need it than need it and, and not have packed it along. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, maybe consider liking and subscribing. If not, that's fine too, whatever. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye. It's dark now. Check out the shadows on my cheekbones.